Right, today we are going to talk about uh, in detail leukemias. Right, you must be knowing that leukemias are the neoplastic proliferative disorders of white blood cells. But before really I go into detail of leukemia, I would love to clear some other terms so that you don't confuse leukemia with some similar pro, uh, medical terms. So let's see that we are going to talk about what? First of all, proliferative, proliferative, yes, disorders of, disorders of white blood cells, right? Now, when we talk about the proliferative disorders of white blood cells, right, there are two types of proliferations of white blood cells. Number one is reactive prolifer proliferations, reactive proliferations, right? Reactive proliferations and number two is neoplastic proliferation, neoplastic proliferations. Now reactive proliferations mean that when in your body there is inflammation or infection and there is challenge to the immune system, right, white blood cell number usually increases, right, white cells uh, actually move from the bone marrow to the blood, peripheral blood in bigger number and even white blood cells which are sticking with the endothelial lining of blood vessels, they also jump into circulation, right, and white cell number increases in the blood. Right? This kind of situation in which white blood, white blood cell number increases in the peripheral blood in reaction to some inflammation or some infection or some trauma or some sort of stress, right? this kind of increase in white blood cell in peripheral circulation is called reactive proliferation. Now basically reactive proliferations are of two types, right? Reactive proliferations are of two types. Number one is simple leukocytosis, leukocytosis and number two is leukomide reaction, leukomoid reaction. Now what is leukocytosis? Everyone knows. I am not going to go into detail of these two things because today's real topic is neoplastic proliferation especially leukemias. We'll go into detail. I'm just mentioning so you don't confuse neoplastic proliferations with reactive proliferations. So reactive proliferations may be leukocytosis or leukomoid reaction. Now, how we know there is reactive proliferation? First of all, you should know that what is the normal white blood cell count in the peripheral blood? Yes. So he says normal white blood cell count is 4,000 to 11,000 in the blood. What 4,000? 4,000 horses or donkeys or sheep or guns, what? Cubic millimeter. 4,000 cubic millimeter. No, 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 no. You should have some the proper way to tell. Yes, doctor. When, if I asked you, what is the normal count of white blood cells in the peripheral circulation in a normal person, the range is, yes, it is not milliliter. Oh, my God. It is 4,000 to, yes, 11,000 but what? Microliter. Oh my god. Milliliter you increase many times. You got it? So what happens in a normal person if you take the blood in a normal healthy person right you are expecting that white blood cell count per microliter of the blood per microliter of the blood should be somewhere between 4,000 to 11,000 right? This is normal range. If white blood cells are less than 4,000 you say there is leukopenia. What is the term called? Leukopenia. Yes, leukopenia. And if uh, white blood cells in the peripheral circulation are more than 11,000, but the proliferation is reactive, right? We call it leukocytosis. Later on, I will tell you what is the difference in leukocytosis and leukomyoid reaction. Now, let me tell you right now. In leukomyoid reaction, even though in leukomyoid reaction, even though there is reactive increase in, in white blood cells in the blood, but this is very high increase. In leukomyoid reaction in the blood, white blood cell count may reach somewhere between 40 to 50 thousand per, yes, microliter. Yeah, now you know it very good. So this is leukomyoid reaction. Let me repeat it. 
that white cell proliferative disorders may be reactive disorders or neoplastic disorders right reactive disorders may be leukocytosis or leukemia reactions neoplastic disorders may be yes leukemias or lymphomas or lymphomas first let me tell you these and then i will come to that in reactive proliferations when there is reactive increase of white blood cell in peripheral circulation right if mild to moderate increase is there we call it leukocytosis when there is mild to moderate increase for example uh, more than 11,000 per microliter it may be 15,000, 20,000, 18,000 it is leukocytosis but if reactive increase in white blood cell in peripheral circulation be, uh, approaches about 30,000 to 50,000 then we say there's leukemide reaction is that right of course leukocytosis again in white blood cell as you know that there are different types of five types of white blood cells and depending upon which component in the blood is high for example is neutral if someone has let's suppose leukocytosis of 16,000 per microliter but out of that 16,000 which type of which subtype of white cell is out of proportion increase which subtype of white cell is out of proportion increase according to that uh, we will label the leukocytosis for example if uh, this person has very severe uh, pyogenic bacterial infection right then in that case neutrophils will be very high in the blood so total leukocyte count will go high and also neutrophil be out, will be out of proportion high. In that case, that kind of leukocytosis will be called, yes, neutro, neutrophilia or neutrophilic leukocytosis. Leukocytosis. What is this kind of leukocytosis? Neutrophilic leukocytosis or conventionally we call it neutrophilia. In the same way, let's talk about another person that he has uh, his big tummy is a host of lot of parasites, right? And uh, which uh, white blood cells will increase in the blood? Eosinophils. Eosinophils, yes, very good. And what we will call it? Eosinophilia, or we can call it eosinophilic, eosino, yes, philic, leukocytosis. Eosinophilic leukocytosis and if due to some allergic condition or due to some drug reaction or due to some specific neoplasia if basophils increase in the blood of course it is less common condition but we call it basophilic yes leukocytosis and then of course in some conditions like my friend has tuberculosis right and in tuberculosis which cells in the blood increase Lymphocy lymphocytes so if lymphocytes are increased in a big number out of proportion in the blood we can call it yes lymphocytosis. Lympho lymphocytosis very good and if let's suppose due to some reason uh, monocytes are increased in the blood like chronic inflammations or chronic infections we can, the condition is called yes lymphocytosis. monocytosis mono cytosis so what did we learn up to now that in proliferative uh, reactive proliferations when white blood cells increase in mild to moderate uh, amount right then we call the condition leukocytosis and leukocytosis can be further designated depending upon which subtype of the white cell is out of proportion increased is that right it may be neutroph neutrophilia or sinophilia or basophilia or monocytosis or lymphocytosis right now we come back what is leukomyoid reaction leukomyoid reaction is when there is very severe stress to the body uh, let me give you some very basic concept that this is your bone marrow house this is your bone marrow house and here is your circulatory system as you know that white blood cells hematopoiesis uh, in an adult is going on in the bone marrow red bone marrow and when hematopoiesis is going on white blood cells are produced in the bone marrow and then they come into circulation is that right and these are the white cell count which we are talking about should be somewhere between these two limits but there are different storage pools of the white blood cells some of the bl white blood cells right they remain stored in the bone marrow what i mean that these white blood cells have been produced but yet not released into circulation you can say a bone marrow act like a woman cooking and storing not releasing to the dining table is that right then some of the white blood cells in a normal person this is called bone marrow storage pool 
in the normal person even some of the blood cells uh, white blood cells which have come into circulation a small proportion of that is sticking with the endothelial cells and this is called marginated pool of white blood cell what is this called marginated pool of white blood cells so we can say even though hematopoiesis normally uh, goes on in the bone marrow red bone marrow but uh, well prepared granulocyte or white blood cells may be pooled in what in the bone marrow house as well as uh, some of the uh, white blood cells which are circulating a part of that remains sticky with the endothelial cell so we say this is marginated pool now when the, there is a stress right inflammatory stress or infection or trauma or surgery or some drugs when there's stress in the, our biological system right if it can st what what can happen number one that marginated pool can be mobilized number two bone marrow pool can be mobilized number three the production house can be overstimulated again lesson so when, what really happens when infection occurs in the beginning this is the marginated white blood cells which jump into the circulation they start circulating previously they are still in circulation but sticky with the endothelial cell so when they jump into circulatory system when you take the blood sample you feel there is leukocytosis then from bone marrow also young white blood cells are released they also increase the number of white blood cells into circulation is that right and if stimulus of stress inflammatory or infection or trauma whatever uh, if that is prolonged then hematopoiesis especially granulopoiesis or white blood cell production right is increased and then it is released and when the production line is increased right we say the sustained neutrophilia let's suppose if neutrophils are coming over there so these are the basic mechanisms now if stress is too much there is so much mobilization of marginated pool and from the bone marrow and bone marrow start producing lot of white blood cells if stress is too much and sustained that lot of white blood cells come here and then it become leukemoid reaction now why i am so much uh, stressing on the leukemoid reaction because uh, leukemoid reaction white blood cells in the blood are very high number and leukemia is also white blood cell in the circulation is very high and sometimes it become extremely important that you should be able to differentiate them right in leukemoid reaction also white blood cell in the circulation is very high and in uh, what leukemias white blood cell in the circulation is very high and it's very important as a doctor to differentiate these two conditions there are many ways to differentiate but uh, one two simple situations we will tell for example leukemoid reaction can be differentiated from can be differentiated from chronic myeloid leukemia in chronic myeloid leukemia as i will discuss later lot of uh, excessive neoplastic proliferation is going on in the bone marrow in chronic myeloid leukemia there is a production of excessive amount of granulocytes which are coming into circulation but how do you know that in a given patient how do you know in a given patient high no, high uh, number of white blood cells or granulocytes is it really leukemoid reaction or is it chronic myeloid leukemia how would you tell it do you have any idea you will ask the patient or what will you do anyone has an idea that if someone has a leu uh, leukemic elevation of white blood cell and other patient has leukemoid increase in white blood cells both patient have very high number of white blood cell in their circulation how would you differentiate this condition very simple number one uh, these white blood cells will be relatively normal these are pathological is that right so in normal white blood cell a leukocyte alkaline phosphatase in enzyme this is an enzyme leukocyte alkaline phosphatase in leukemoid reaction in the cells leukocyte alkaline phosphatase lab score is high leukocyte alkaline phosphatase is high but in case of chronic myeloid leukemia these are leukemic cells neoplastic cells and maybe they don't have enough expertise you know when cells become neoplastic uh, their ability to uh, for very well differentiated function and structure become less so maybe because these cells are unable to produce leukocyte alkaline phosphatase so in this case we can say there's low level of leukocyte alkaline <coughs> phosphatase this is one way to differentiate in the blood am i clear yes second condition is another way to differentiate is if you are really confused between leukemoid reaction 
you are confused between the leukomat reaction and suppose acute myeloid leukemia acute myeloid leukemia or any type of acute leukemia myeloid or lymphoid the difference is that as i will tell you later that in acute in acute leukemias in the blood immature progenitor cells jump in neoplastic immature cells jump into blood these immature cells are called blast cells in acute leukemias it, right it may be acute myeloid leukemia or it may be acute lymphoid leukemia right what really happens they form the bone marrow malignant cells malignant cells which resemble like a very very early precursor white blood cells they jump into circulation these cells are large and they proliferate well these large well proliferating leukemic cells are also called leukemic blast cells right normally for the diagnosis of leukemic blast cell we say that in bone marrow leukemic blast cell if they are more than 20% then we support the diagnosis of leukemia now in case if you are confused between leukemoid reaction and acute myeloid leukemia or acute even lymph lymphoblastic leukemia one way to differentiate is very simple what is that you look at the blast cell in circulation in this case blast cell will be abundantly present in circulation in about 90% of the patient and of course lot of blast cell present in bone marrow right in bone marrow blast cells will be more than 20% cellularity but here in leukemoid reaction blast cells in bone marrow or in peripheral blood never almost never go above 20% is that right this is one more way to differentiate between leukemoid reaction and acute myeloid leukemia am i clear so now you understand even though our topic is leukemia but why i mentioned these two condition so you should not be confusing these two terms with real leukemic situation now we come into the real action what is leukemia and what is the real difference between leukemia and lymphoma because it confuses a lot of people so who is going to tell me what is the difference between leukemia and lymphoma someone has an idea yes no this is not very clear cut yes what is the difference in lymphoma and leukemia are the two different diseases or maybe sometimes they are same disease they are different diseases okay you are an old student yes lymph nodes okay my friend has given a very strange definition he says lymphoma is the proliferation of a neoplastic proliferation of lymph node it is wrong remember that yes so lymphoma is basically disease of lymphatic system so okay he came up with very unusual definition he said lymphoma is the disease of lymphatic system and then leukemia is what yes doctor i am very very sensitive Uh, every good doctor should be very clear concept between lymphoma and leukemia because the modern classifications of lymphomas and leukemias they have been totally changed why because many lymphomas are like leukemias and many leukemias are like lymphoma i will explain why but let me tell, yes doctor you have any idea what is lymphoma and leukemia difference the proliferation of lymphocytes okay okay my friend came another weird classification he says lymphoma is proliferation of lymphocytes and leukemia is proliferation of okay so uh, my friend was saying that uh, leukemia is the uh, lymphoma is the proliferation of lymphocytes have you heard lymphoblastic leukemia it means lymphoid system can give a leukemic situation also am i right doctor so it means not anyone who is really clear my friend i think i should start telling you are telling me some things which i never thought in my life right uh, let me tell you now i will really go into detail of leukemia and lymphoma and more than that i will tell you what is the real difference in them uh, rather than telling you difference it is more important to tell what is similarity also yes right because it's not your fault if you feel depressed you cannot tell because many young doctors or even old doctors they are not very clear it is not their fault actually concept is so fastly evolving right it's difficult to keep 
keep a pace with that. So now we are going into this game that what is the real difference between yes leukemia and lymphoma. Okay, before really I go into such a detailed high class medical discussion, I want to put a very simple question. Do you know the difference between milk and butter? Yes, you anyone who does not know the difference between milk and butter? Everyone knows? Yes. Yeah, this is the only difference between leukemia and lymphoma. I will tell you. Leukemia spread like milk. I will explain how. And lymphomas are just like a piece of butter cake. Right? Okay, let's talk about it. This is bone marrow house, right? This is bone marrow house, right? And here is your peripheral circulation. And of course, you have uh, lymphoid tissue like thymus, thymus, and there are lymph node, and there is, yes, your friend spleen, and here is liver, right? Now, what is leukemia? Leukemia is Yes, neoplastic proliferation of hematopoietic precursor cells. Now listen carefully. It's not enough. Just listen first. Don't write. Leukemia is what? Neoplastic, which is always what? Malignant. Neoplastic proliferation of hematopoietic precursor cell. Now hematopoietic precursor cells may be myeloid or may be lymphoid. Hematopoietic precursor cell. What are what are those precursor cells? Hematopoietic precursor cells are those precursor cells which make the blood cells. Is that right? Hemato hematopoietic precursor cells. Here is suppose hematopoietic precursor cell or stem cell, then progenitor cells. Eventually they go into two line. They go into what? Uh, lymphoid line and myeloid line. They go into lymphoid line and myeloid line but these cells these early cells these are called hematopoietic precursor cells when hematopoietic precursor cells become malignant right then these leukemias can form now what really happens that the special feature of leukemia is that when this cell Normally these cells proliferation is well controlled and well regulated. Normally proliferation of hematopoietic cells is well controlled and well regulated. When you need more cells, they over proliferate. When you need less cells, they under proliferate. You know that, isn't it? Now, but in neoplastic proliferation, they are undergoing excessive proliferation, uncontrolled, unregulated proliferation, unneeded proliferation. Is that right? Due to that reason, they make excessive cells. Now listen very carefully. Normally what happens, imagine this cell, if it is normally proliferating, it will proliferate, make a hematopoietic tissue in the bone marrow, and then as needed, cells will be spilling into circulation. Of course, lymphocytes will go to the thymus or other tissues, they undergo processing there, and they become mature there. Is that right? Now. If these malignant cell, this is the point to understand, if this malignant cell is like spread like a milk, if you put a glass of milk, it will spread all over. It will, if you put the, throw the milk here, it will spread all over. Okay, let me show. This is a glass of milk and I'm pouring here. This is milk coming. Now it will proliferate everywhere. So then it will spill over into circulation. Right? So if leukemic cells, now listen careful, or malignant cells, the right term should, if the malignant cells diffusely involve the bone marrow, diffusely involve the bone marrow, and they have a tendency eventually to spill into circulation, they are behaving in a milky way. This type of behavior shown by such malignant cell is called leukemia. So what is leukemia? When hematopoietic precursor cells, it does not matter they are myeloid line or lymphoid line. It does not matter. Don't tell me lymphoma is lymphoid and uh, leukemia is myeloid. No. Just remember, if these, what? Malignant hematopoietic precursor cells undergo malignant transformation. Right? 
and after undergoing malignant transformation they are no more sticky to each other sometimes cell becomes sticky they are no more sticky to each other they are they are not holding the hands they just start spreading here and there in the bone marrow and then jump into circulation who is say this cell has undergone what leukemic situation so it is it will clinically present as leukemia because clinical presentation of leukemia is associated with bone marrow failure due to diffuse spread of not localized diffuse spread of leukemic cell in the bone marrow and then jump into circulation is that right now we imagine another situation same cell undergo malignancy listen now second situation now butter cake same cell undergo what malignant transformation but these malignant cell love each other hold the hands of each other and don't leave each other and they are very reluctant to leave each other and they st stay at some place for example like this or for example this malignant cell go into circulation one or two and it resides over here and it make a mass here now this is making a discrete mass it's making a well defined mass it is making a clear cut mass and they refuse to jump into circulation in big number they may go into circulation in very small number to metastasize and infiltrate other tissues but they don't massively jump into circulation so these are the loving malignant cells they have a mutual love they make a discrete mass they make a diffuse spread they are just like a piece of butter right this is called lymphoma, lymphoma. the real difference between leukemia and lymphoma is the way they spread and clinically present the latest concept is i will go to more detail of this first of all lesson when hematopoietic precursor cells become malignant if they diffusely spread into bone marrow and eventually have a tendency to jump into circulation they are not in love with each other they are not in love with each other they are just like right and these non loving disloyal cells spreading here and there and there right these are leukemic cells but if the same cell right are loving each other and they stick to each other right and they don't like to go to the blood and move all about the body and they they wherever they are produced they remain into very big mass and even one of them come out from here it goes to spore spleen or liver or git or to the brain there it proliferate and again the, all the descendant cells love each other and make a well defined clear cut mass like a piece of butter then we say this is lymphoma, lymphoma. that is why <coughs> lymphos lymphoid tumors lymphoid neoplasia can be leukemic can be lymphomatous the real difference in leukemia and lymphoma is the way they behave. spread and behave is that clear so this is clear so again i will say the real difference between leukemia and lymphoma is the difference of milk and butter if malignant cell hematopoietic precursor cell become malignant and like a butter cake they remain sticky and make a well defined discrete mass in any tissue this well defined discrete mass of lymphoma may be in lymph node it may be in the liver spleen may be in bone marrow may be in the brain may be in git or anywhere in the body but when they are making a well defined mass this is lymphoma and lymphoma in lymphoma case uh, lymphoma cells don't come into blood in very high number is that right any question up to this okay. now if i say i have one person on my right hand okay this is one person and this is another person in this person hematopoietic precursor cells become malignant and white spread in bone marrow i know i'm putting a lot of time and also circulate in high number in the blood what is this leukemia and here also same cell become malignant but one thing they have lot of sticky molecules adhesive with each other making well defined discrete mass what is that lymphoma. lymphoma thank you very much for understanding it but i will still elaborate it further ah even though i tried to tell you there's a lot of difference between leukemia and lymphoma but in modern medicine practice the differences are getting blurred you know why because sometimes in some patient in some time in some patient disease start as leukemia when patient come to the doctor 
He has all the features of leukemia. Bone marrow is uh, <coughs> hypercellular with diffuse spread of the malignant cells. And in the blood, there's a lot of white blood cells. Patient come to you as leukemia, but after as disease is passing by over the months, suddenly you find a one lymph node very big and large. What has happened? Patient originally had leukemia. Maybe some leukemic cell went to a lymph node. There it decided that I will proliferate. But all the children of that cell, the progeny of that cell, they decided to make a living family. And they stick there. What they have given rise to? Lymphoma. So, milk converted into? Butter. Butter. So, we can say that originally disease, when it presented, it was leukemia. But sometimes in patients with the leukemia, over the time, they can make a lymphoma mass. Am I clear? Yes. Then another situation. You may come another patient who originally came with lymphoma, right? That hematopoietic precursor cells underwent pro, uh, neoplastic transformation and then they, they made a well-defined discrete mass. Let's suppose in this lymph node. Yes. So now we say this is lymphoma. Yes. But in the blood, circulating cells are not significantly elevated. So we will call it lymphoma, right? You keep oh, try to treat it. Now you have a butter cake here. You have butter cake here. Yes. But unfortunately it is resistant to treatment. And it is quite possible, sometimes it really happens, that very resistant, very nasty type of lymphoma family, not responding to treatment, over a few months or years, 